Goddamn girls are leaving me an old lady all by herself. We'll be back, Grandma. Shitheads. We gotta go to California. Yeah, right. We finally worked out, you guys. Four trips back and forth to California without a load. I finally found me a load. Power only, holla. It's, uh, it's cool, you know, it's whatever. It's a $1,400 bill. It ain't, it ain't make or break it type money. Um, but it is going to alleviate the cost to drive to California completely empty and pay for the diesel. So it is, it is paying for the diesel, it's paying for the hotels, it's paying for the food, it's paying for all that. Uh, probably won't put much money in my pocket. Uh, but it was kind of a toss up. You know, I always like to look and I found one and my mom said, take it. Don't go over there empty. <laughs> so I got to listen to mama. You know how that goes. So uh, we're doing a little bit. So I had, so these are the things, you know, when you're, when you're doing power only, obviously, you know, you need to have registration. You need to have good tires. It needs to be road worthy. And, um, Things, you know, with things we gotta double check everything. So that's the pigtail, but it's not gonna reach all the way here. So we gotta take these bolts off, these nuts off, and then do that. A while back, I had the pigtail connector ran up here closer to the uh, to the hitch, to the gooseneck, because the pigtail kept getting, you know, kept getting in the way. It kept getting pulled out. It kept, you know, all of this stuff with this truck with no bed. Obviously, if you keep the bed on your truck, you use the uh, seven way that's inside the bed or at the bumper of your truck. But since I removed this bed, it was, we were playing a whole lot of, you know, we had a lot of issues with the pigtail, you know, disconnecting itself. So I had the pigtail run up here. Well, now I have an issue with that because this cord is too short. So got to get a little wrench and get these unplugged so that I can use this and then we check the brakes, check the lights, hopefully everything works. We'll see how it goes. This trailer is for the birds, you guys. This, I've already driven it 200 miles. I hated it at 50 miles. Hey, this power only crap is stupid. Okay, so let's talk about that, right? For one, it's a buck a mile. Oh, I need death. It's a buck a mile, which is not a good rate. Even if it's just power only, it's not a good rate, but it was off the open market. Okay, off a of central dispatch, picked up close to my house. Okay, fine. So that's all That's all fine. And it's dropping off on the way. It's dropping off to Yuma, Arizona, on the way to SoCal so I can pick up my trailer and be done with it. Okay, $1,400. It's going to cost me about $700 to run it, right? It would have probably cost me about $600, maybe a little less, if I were to just bobtail, right? Empty. Nothing. No trailer behind me. But the difference between bobtailing and taking this trailer is the feel, okay? This trailer is all over the place. It's like fishtails, you know, once you hit 64 miles per hour, I'm doing 64 in a 70, 75 max, I'm doing 64, I'm usually doing like 60. So I'm getting 12 miles to the gallon. It's not a heavy trailer, but I'm hoping I don't catch any wind in New Mexico, because if I do, it's just, it's gonna take forever to get out there. So that's the big difference is, yeah, I'm making a little bit of money on this load, hauling this trailer, but it's gonna be a tough ride as opposed to if I would have just bobtailed, I could have got there fast. You know, yeah, I would have been out of pocket, but, but the other thing about this power only is, it's one thing if you're leased on to one of the big uh, carriers that all they do is they have contracts for RVs. That's one thing. Because then you're picking up, you know, nine times out of ten, they're brand new ones or, or, or very, very new, used but very new. All the lights work, all the brakes work, all the, you know, you got all the paperwork. There's, there's, no, um, there's no question about it. But when you're hauling a 2005, I'm very lucky that the brakes work. You know, they just got this trailer out of the shop, so they did, you know, the, they did the brakes and they checked the wiring and they did all of that stuff. The customer was telling me, oh, I just, you know, I just got it out of the shop. I spent 1300 bucks. I'm like, yeah, me too. I just got my other trailer out of the shop. I spent three grand and I'm on my way to go pick up another trailer. And I don't know how many thousands of dollars that one's going to cost me. Like, yeah, that's, that's part of the maintenance of these trailers. So I, I you know, I'm, I was glad that they did do that because I got lights and I got brakes, so I'm good. But man, hauling this thing, it just bounces around back there. You hit some bumps, it's just bouncing around. I do not feel chingona, okay? Driving this trailer, and it does not look chingona, okay? I hate this trailer already. 
Um, I have bobtailed back and forth from California to Texas and from Texas to California a couple times. You guys have seen me over the years. And I just, you know, I just pay the, you know, pay the piper, pay the diesel and, and get it over with. And it's not that I haven't looked for something like this, a power only. Uh, it's just that I haven't, you know, found it thus far. Now I found this one. Okay, I'll try it out. In my opinion, you guys, totally for the birds. I could have been going way faster. I could have been, you know, and without a load, you know, the ELD is not an issue. Now it's, a, you know, I got to abide by all these rules and stuff. So I don't know, it, for me, and then if you guys are looking at power only as a way of generating revenue, this is not the way to do it. You're gonna, hauling the big fifth wheels, okay, those make some money, or hauling a trailer that you can put multiple small RVs or small utility trailers, little enclosed trailers onto your trailer, that's the way to do it. Just doing these one and done, you know, piece by piece, Unless you're like, se you wanna be semi-retired and you just wanna do, you know, do this to bounce you around the country so you can see the country and you don't wanna have the maintenance and the upkeep of, a, of having your own trailer, um, then that, that's really the only way I would see doing something like this is, is if I was way older, maybe I had people that have family all across the country or friends and family all across the country, or they just wanna bounce around, they don't really have a, a schedule, they don't really have a lot of bills, and they just kinda want you know RVs like this to just pay for their diesel and pay for their you know food and lodging and stuff like that because beyond that you're not making you're not making money off of these RVs not the way this one is done on the open market again if you're leased on you know if you've got a, a trailer that could haul multiple uh, multiple trailers on it or RVs on it little you know bumper pull trailers whatever then okay then you're making some money but just like this one and done no it feels like crap I'm not used to it. You know, a gooseneck feels a lot better. It's a lot tighter. The weight of the hitch is over your rear axle of your truck as opposed to this bumper pull. It's like all over the place. Uh, just, it's not for me. It's totally not for me. I, if I have to go back and forth from California empty again, I'll just eat the cost of the diesel because this is the feel of it, you know, the look of it, just mm -mm. It's not for me, my friend. No, 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 nope. We're dealing with it because it's it's done obviously it's done i gotta take it another 1100 miles to yuma but i probably won't do this one again no it's gonna have to pay way better than a buck a mile for me to go through this again uh even if i have to cut the eat the costs of paying diesel to drive bobtail 1500 miles no way anywho you guys be safe see you in a couple days dropping off two days later wasn't bad it wasn't bad going to a nice RV park here in uh, Yuma, Arizona. It wasn't a bad trip. Um, all in all, you guys, you know what? I spent a little less than $400 on diesel. So we'll go over those numbers in a little bit. E other than the, you know, fishtailing with a little bit of wind, just a little bit of wind. Man, this uh, bumper pool feels so much different than a, a fifth wheel or a gooseneck. So it's kind of real different. This is a 32 footer from what I was told. And uh, yeah, two days, 1400 bucks, less than 400 on diesel. We're good to go. All in all, wasn't bad actually. Was not a bad, uh, was not a bad trip. Took us two days to get out here. Uh, we got pretty good MPG. And uh, other than the trailer was really bouncy, you know, and just a little bit of wind, that's, that thing starts just moving on you. So the, um, it was also nice because uh, I wasn't in a 40 footer. That RV was only 32 feet. So really I could get in and out of anywhere and the axles were set so far forward. It did not help with the bouncing when you hit a bump on the highway. But uh, the pro to that is I had a really great turn radius so I could get that thing in, in anywhere. Lexi and I stopped for tacos in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Bomb. I, I wish I could remember the name, you guys. I don't remember it. It was just some little place. It was, it was wonderful. It was really nice. And then we stopped in uh, Tucson and we had a really nice breakfast at uh, some cafe. And we just, uh, you know, we did a little shopping and we just enjoyed each other's company. This is the first time that Lexi has been on a trip with me um, since well before we moved to Texas. And it's almost been a year, you guys. It's already almost been a year that we have moved to Texas. So it's been, it's been a little while. Time really does fly. Um, it's nice to be back in California. 
Lexi and I just got to the hotel. Um, we watched the Transformers movie. Today it came out. We're big Transformers fans. So we watched that. It was very good. You guys should see it. And it's not over if you wanted to know. I won't tell you about the video, but it's not over. So uh, that was really cool. Dropped the trader off, the little RV off this morning. And the PJ, God willing, is uh, going to be ready tomorrow. So I'm very excited to pick it up. That's why I'm here. And that's why I have kept my new driver, T, which if you guys are watching me on TikTok, I did a little quick little video of her and she's done some videos on her TikTok and um, with you know my equipment and showing off some of her loads already. And I'll tell you more about T in, an, in, a, in a future video. And I will tell you guys about the PJ in a future video. More to come, you guys be safe. I will talk to you soon.